waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the a bit earlier at about 7 a.m., a group from the coast. Welcome to Hashtag PH 2013. Today on Rappler. Should we give in to threats and intimidation, terror, violence of any armed group? Dito sa bansa, we should stand up and for our success. The Philippines military chief tells local fishermen to ignore China's new fishing rules. The government launches an open data portal and a cashless purchase system to improve transparency and accountability. And Thai protesters threaten to capture the prime minister in an increasingly bold bid to drive her from office. Hello, I'm Natasha Gutierrez sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Philippine military chief General Emmanuel Bautista tells local fishermen to ignore China's new fishing rules requiring foreigners to seek permission before fishing in the South China Sea. Bautista says, quote, we will ignore the fisheries law of China. Should we give in to threats and intimidation, terror, violence of any armed group? Dito sa bansa, we should stand up and for our uh, as a people. The Philippine government criticized the new rules, saying they reinforce China's expansive claim over the sea under the Nine Dash Line. The Philippines earlier raised the maritime dispute to an international tribunal, but Bautista says the military is prepared for, quote, any eventuality. The Philippines wants to acquire two more Navy ships from the United States to boost its maritime protection in the middle of tensions with China. The funds to boost maritime defense will come from the $40 million military assistance pledged by U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry in December. Military Chief General Emmanuel Bautista says the Philippines needs six more frigates to guard its long coastline effectively. The Philippines has already acquired two refurbished American frigates in the past two years, which now lead patrols in the South China Sea. The government launches what it calls its most significant good governance initiatives aimed to improve transparency and accountability. On Wednesday, President Benigno Aquino launches the new Cashless Purchase Card or CPC system for government agencies and an open data portal to make government information readily available to the people. In his keynote speech at the government-organized Good Governance Summit, Aquino says his administration's focus is to improve processes. Many of these are rooted in systems and processes that, while they may have served their purpose at one time, are badly outdated. Even worse, they are susceptible to abuse, which could lead to inefficiency, wastage, and opportunities for the unscrupulous to steal from the nation's coffers. This is why we have taken every step necessary. The CPC system is the government's response to alleged conversion of funds in the military, which involved billions of pesos. The cashless purchase cards permit instant liquidation. The military, the Commission on Audit, and the Budget Department will test the cards in the first quarter of 2014. And if successful, it will be rolled out in other government agencies next year. Aquino says the cards will also collect real data that will help the government understand which programs need the most funding. Aside from the CPC system, Aquino also introduces the Open Data Portal, an online platform that collates all relevant data of government. The Commission on Audit, or COA, wants officials and employees of 31 government-owned and controlled corporations, or GOCCs, to reimburse the government for 2.3 billion pesos. COA says the 31 GOCCs paid bonuses and benefits to employees, quote, without or in excess of legal basis or proper authority in 2012. The Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, or PhilHealth, tops COA's list with 1.65 billion pesos it paid in unlawful stipends. Another co-audit report noted the PhilHealth Governing Board approved 22 allowances and benefits without getting approval from the President's office, including regular salaries and other benefits, the personal services tallied for the year, reached 2.825 billion pesos, around 150 million pesos higher than in 2011. 
Thai opposition protesters occupying central Bangkok threatened Tuesday to take Prime Minister Ying Lok Shinawatra captive and close down all government offices in an increasingly bold bid to force her from office. The protesters, backed by the kingdom's royalist establishment, want Ying Lok to resign to make way for an unelected People's Council that would oversee reforms to curb the political dominance of her family. But Ying Lok supporters say the rallies threaten Thailand's fragile democracy. They want the dispute to be settled at the ballot box on February 2. For the third day, protesters occupy major roads in an attempted shutdown of Bangkok. On Wednesday, two people are injured in a shooting at a rally, while a small blast shakes a house owned by the opposition leader's family. Protest leader Sutep Tagsuban accuses the government of orchestrating the attacks. Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 6, Egyptians vote in a referendum on a new constitution that's likely to launch the presidential bid of the army chief who overthrew President Mohamed Morsi. An Islamist coalition led by Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood urged protests and a boycott of the two-day vote. The charter did away with much of the Islamist-inspired wording of Morsi's constitution, but it gave the military more powers, granting the army the right to appoint the defense minister and to try civilians for attacks on the armed forces. At number 7, Filipina caregiver Rose Fastanis wins the Israel edition of the popular reality TV talent show X Factor. Rose had been one of the favorites to win the reality show's first season, with performances regularly praised by the show's judges. For her final performance, she sang My Way by Frank Sinatra and Alicia Keys' If I Ain't Got You in, du in a duet with her mentor Shiri Maiman. And at number 8, the popular gaming console PlayStation 4 is now officially available in the Philippines. Manufacturer Sony says about 1,000 consoles have been sold since it began accepting pre-orders in December 2013. The device is priced from between 25,000 pesos to just under 27,500 pesos. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. We take a peek into the future as new exciting technology debut at the Consumers Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Josh Villanueva reports. There was a lot on display at the 2014 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, considered to be the largest tech event of the year. Three central themes stood out. 4K, or 4x HD, was the biggest hit. While 4K TVs have been around for a while, Korean rivals LG and Samsung both unveiled 105-inch curved televisions. Both manufacturers also showed off bendable 4K TVs that could transform from flat to curved. And if TVs aren't your thing, Sony showed off a 4K projector that can project images onto a wall from as near as 22 inches away. LG also showed off a 4K computer monitor, perfect for photographers and video editors. Of course, what use is a 4K display if you don't have 4K content? ZTE unveiled the Nubia 5S, the latest smartphone that can shoot 4K video. And for those wanting a bit more, Sony unveiled a 4K Handycam. The prosumer device comes with a 1-inch sensor and should be available for just under $2,000 in the first quarter of 2014. Wearables were also a big trend. Pebble showed off a steel watch, the first wearable we've seen in a while, that looks like a legitimate accessory. Garmin's VivoFit lasts a year on a single charge. The Jaybird Rain is smart enough to know if you're either walking, running, cycling, or swimming. It knows when you're sleeping and when you're awake. It'll tell you the best time to work out and when you should be skipping the gym. And there was Sony's core-based smart band. The core is a removable tracking chip that can be worn in a variety of ways. Coming this March, Sony's smart band is the first of many wearables planned in Sony's new LifeLog platform. High-tech cars also took center stage at the world's favorite gadget show. Toyota showed off the FCV concept car. Coming in 2015, the four-seat sedan runs on hydrogen fuel cells. Hydrogen mixes with oxygen in the air to produce horsepower that allows the car to go from 1 to 100 kilometers per hour in 10 seconds. Audi demoed a self-driving car that will wake you up if you fall asleep. We spotted BMW's first electric car, the i3, all over Vegas. The self-parking car integrates with the Samsung Galaxy Gear smartwatch. For now, the smartwatch can access the car's battery level and control things like locking the doors 
and honking the horn. Ford also showed off a prototype for a solar-powered car. The Ford C-Max Solar Energy has photovoltaic panels built into its roof and a canopy that serves as a magnifying glass to boost the absorption of solar power. Josh Villanueva, Rappler, Las Vegas. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. Let's check out today's mood navigator. Just a few different colors for today. Let's check out this big red circle on the left. Filipino American from Las Vegas admits to killing wife. This has 45% of readers feeling angry and 36% feeling sad. It's a sad story. Over to the right, one of two blue circles. Only in Davao, ex-mayor Duterte caught for speeding. This has 61% of readers feeling amused and 23% feeling happy. And of course, hard to ignore the big green circle right in the center. This has gotten a lot of hits. Pinay caregiver Rose Fostanes wins X Factor Israel. She was phenomenal. That's 75% of people feeling happy about that and 13% of people feeling inspired. All these stories contribute to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, January 15, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel in our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Natasha Gutierrez. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.